and welcome to the salty siren corner of the LARP house. It's a corner I occasionally go to when I am a salty, salty siren, and I have been salty about this particular issue for a minute. LARP community, we need to talk about the way that content creators are treated. What I'm talking about in this episode is the value of what content creators do and respect for that whether you're coming at them from a business perspective or not. But first I need a couple disclaimers because I can already hear the keyboard bongos a-going. The games and communities I am mostly directing this video towards are the larger blockbuster style LARPs. I am not talking about your more intimate or locally run games, necessarily. Patreon supporters, Kofi supporters, people who've supported LARP House in any way, the salty portion of this is really not directed at you. You're why we're here. You get it. This video is really for people who make comments like these. and for people who want to help change that. Me, Momo, Kaza, and other LARP content creators get comments like this with some consistency. And it's a very specific kind of irony because they pop up on the screens that we've been sitting at already for hours, editing videos to showcase this hobby that we love. For the vampire video I put out a couple weeks ago, I spent about 13 hours editing just the trailer in the beginning of the video. That trailer was less than two minutes long. The Avalon trailer that I put out shortly after took a similar amount of time. I worked with a sound designer friend and built a cover of a song from scratch. I was not paid for either of these videos. I'm not being paid to go to either of these events. I didn't ask to be paid. I bought my own tickets, travel, was not compensated, or lodging. I just did it because I love the hobby. So trust me when we're told that LARP is a labor of love. We know. <laughs> we put all this work in because we love LARP, and because we want to show people what inspires us about each game. I think that LARP can change lives. It's definitely changed mine. So we make videos. I make videos sharing what I've learned from over 13 years of studying art, and crafting, and makeup. I make videos with mental health professionals about how LARP can help ease symptoms of mental illness and even help people overcome PTSD, trauma, and addiction. I put a video out for the entire internet about my own struggles with mental illness so that people could see how LARP has helped me personally. I make videos about the lasting friendships that come from LARP and the stories that we tell together and the hope that those stories give people. I've been doing this now for over two years, I've made over a hundred LARP videos and my viewers have made LARP House into the fastest growing LARP channel out of the top five. Which thank you. That is incredibly rewarding, especially considering what goes in to a decent video. things cost money, or time, or labor, or all three. Sometimes a little bit, sometimes quite a lot. And that's all without even considering the actual market value of the content itself. So I'm going to show you guys my numbers, just mine. And I want you to keep in mind that I am the smallest of the top three LARP YouTube channels. The smallest. These are from a website called Social Blue Book. Social Blue Book that is very hard to say. Social Blue Book. Social Blue Book determines the market value for dedicated social media based on your followers and viewers and the rate at which they engage with you. Because that is part of the service that we provide for these events that we go to and make videos for, whether we mean to or not. I mean, we make videos 
because we're having fun. But the result is that we become their marketing. As of right now, one of my videos alone could cost almost 400 American dollars, and that's not even including any production costs. That is just the value of a video uploaded to this channel. And again, I am the smallest of the top three LARP YouTube channels. Imagine for a second what one of Kaz's videos might be worth, or Momo O'Brien. I'll give you a hint, it's in the multiple thousands of dollars. Hi there, it's your girl, Momo O'Brien, just putting away dishes at her jobs. I am, I am, I'm gonna find some place quiet. I am at work, a place where I spend 40 plus hours a week. Tonight, I am going home, I am going to probably pop something in the microwave and edit the Bothwell video that I have spent 15 hours on so far and I have not even finished the rough cut of the footage that we got at the event. And I've been working professionally as a cinematographer and editor since I was 16 years old. I am professionally trained in this. I have made money off of this. This was my full-time job for quite some time until I moved out to the city and started doing YouTube and stuff. I should be charging people just to make the video because that's my profession. So the reason that I want you to understand what the value of one of these videos is and what goes into them is not so that we can demand hundreds and thousands of dollars from everyone who wants us to go to an event. Not at all. I'm making this known because I want companies and organizers to understand that when you ask us to come to your event and make a video in exchange for free tickets and that's it, or a free product and that's it, it's kind of like giving an artist a yard of raw canvas cloth and asking them to make a painting and considering that an equal exchange. We couldn't do what we do without it, but it barely makes a dent in the production costs, let alone goes towards us actually getting paid. It's for all the people that think we get paid to have fun. We don't, we don't get paid. We lose money, uh, so even the things that you guys think we get for free, they're not really free. We have to take photos of them and post about it. Like, we're given things in exchange for promotion, which takes time and effort. I will always make videos for small games that I think genuinely deserve videos, but if you are requesting that we go to your game, I want to be able to afford chicken. <laughs> I haven't bought clothes for myself in like a year! We can't pay our rent in free wigs or free LARP tickets. Be cool if we could though. So these things aren't really payment. They're not gifts. They're things that we absolutely need to be able to do the job that we're asked to do. So with those situations being what they are, Patreon and Kofi and all of those wonderful crowdfunding resources that we are so grateful for. They're the reasons that we can continue to make our art. Most LARP YouTubers have multiple sources of income like this, and we all still struggle. At the same time, we've been met with vitriol for, for doing that. Why? But why? I personally have been told that I am the worst thing that has ever happened to LARP. And I'm, I'm not at all saying that to have a pity party. I'm actually, I'm actually kind of flattered that I was that important in this person's narrative. I would have picked a more compelling choice for a villain, but that's just me. I say this because some company representatives have gaslit us, harassed and insulted us, or at best met with a begrudging acceptance when we're asking for less than the bare minimum. Stories that make decent people upsetty spaghetti. And yeah, I love, I love LARP. I love making costumes. I love making videos, but I'm not gonna lie. There was a point this year where I considered giving up. I considered not making LARP YouTube videos anymore because there was a lot of things that LARP companies did to me. Literally the only reason I'm not saying I'm the crap that I've been through is because I don't want to get sued by LARP companies, which is a, that's a thing that could happen. And then we go to these games, we do our work, and then afterwards, so many wonderful people come up and tell us that we are the reason that they are at the event. 
Momo O'Brien, with a reach of almost 85,000 people, the biggest LARP YouTube channel, is paying off debt from the cost of making these videos. She pays out of pocket and worries about making her own rent in order to provide a service for these games and for the LARP community. And it is a valuable service. I love, I love helping games, and I love making videos about them, and if somebody wants me to be at their game, of course I want to be at their game. So, I sometimes wanted to buy food other than pasta, and I couldn't afford to because I had to buy fabric to make costumes for Beekaleen. I'm a, I'm a stressed little bean. I'm a stressed out little bean. And if you don't believe me about that, maybe you will believe Sharice Tatum, an organizer of Philbus Productions. Take it away, Sharice. I'm gonna take a break. And yes, I am drinking out of a shell. Gotta stay on brand. Hi guys, I'm Sharice Tatum from Fellows Productions and I have a couple of pointers that I want to add to this. First, I want to tell a little about myself so that you know where I come from. I have 15 years of event coordinating and planning productions experience. Uh, including running SodakCon, South Dakota's largest anime and geek convention. On top of that, I have a bachelor's degree in public relations and an associate's degree in tourism and hospitality management, which is a business specialty degree that is just about tourism and hospitality and event coordinating. Now, I have two fronts I want to tackle. The first one being that other fan gatherings have learned and have come to do a certain amount of protocols that I think LARPs should start following suit. And second, that LARPs should definitely start looking and acting like businesses. I know it's really hard for creators and more of the artistic flair to think about that or even the academic side, but if we're going to continue uh, progressing how we have over the past couple of years, we need to start looking as businesses. So the first run. Other fan gatherings, be it Comic Con, Ren Fairs, or even cultural festivals like Highland Games, there are protocols and standards of norms that everyone else already follows. And they've been doing that since the 80s. And I'm at least, I think some of the Ren Fairs have been going even longer than that. And those protocols have been there. The first being, I know that we've been calling people like Shay and Momo and Kaza, LARP influencers. I don't like that word mostly because it seems almost like a gangster, you know, kind of like mobsters. I'm gonna go by the industry standards I know, which is they are special guests. When it comes to pop cons or geek conventions and other festivals, these special guests, there are standards. And those standards are food, lodging, travel, of course the ticket that's not even like thought of it's just like it's part of it and then an appearance fee of course the appearance fees cost differently depending on who the special guest is but it's standard an example a voice actor isn't going to be paid as much as a top-notch a-list actor but they are still paid a fee and they are still covered with transportation they are still covered with food and lodging it is a standard and LARPs need to pick up this standard uh, it's one of those things that when you are doing an event if a special guest person that is interested in coming to your event says hey this is what we do and you're like no we don't do that or we don't do appearance fees they're not going to come to your event so let's just jump into the second front the second front is special guests especially these larp influencers that you guys call them they are more than just special guests and here is why they are more than just special guests with special guests, it is the appearance of them going to your event that bring people in. And that is why I call them a special guest as well. But what these amazing women do, and men, and non-binary, what they have done and are continuing to do is shape the world of LARP. And LARP needs to start thinking as a business. And here's why. When these special guests come to your events, they're not just bringing people and players that want to come to your event. They are your advertising, they are your marketing, they are your legacy, they are building your brand. You are relying on them to build your brand and if you don't pay them, that's really poor business plan. When you are doing your finances and when you're doing your budget, you really need to be like, okay, I am spending this amount of money and budget 
who you want coming and start budgeting. Okay, I'm going to pay this amount for special guests. And if one special guest takes all of that, then that's your budget. Because of all of the stuff that they do with Twitter and Instagram and, and YouTube, they are selling your events and you need to pay them as such. Their cost, uh, even an appearance fee and a ticket and flights and food and lodging is quite minimal compared to anything that you would ever pay for advertising for anywhere else. You just need to accept that you are a business now and that you are paying this. I'm trying not to come as aggressive. I'm sorry, you guys. I just, I get very uh, enthusiastic. Oh, I kind of talked about the legacy. Let's go into it a little bit more. Years down the road, if you have a special guest, especially one of these YouTubers, they're not just building a legacy, but they're building a visual legacy and a quality legacy for your event. Even if you don't have them come back in another year or two just because of cost, what they've already created for you is priceless. I know as a fact personally that I have gone to a LARP only because of video that either Kaza or Momo has done and that had been a year or two ago before um, I've gone and that is such a lasting advertising and a lasting legacy and visual legacy that you can't see anywhere else in the advertising world. They are also hitting straight to your demographic and market. They are your mainstream for your demographic and market and uh, you can't pay for that to have immediate access to your demographic. I know companies, even large corporates have spent years trying to fine tune their demographic and market and you don't have to do that if you have them as a special guest. So um, yeah, you guys need to pay them. <laughs> I'll stop being aggressive, but before I leave, I do want to do one more soapbox, I promise, and then Cheyenne, you can have your video back. There has been talk that people feel that these special guests get preferential treatment, and in essence they are, because we're paying them to be there. They are doing a job, so of course we're going to give them a little bit more preferential treatment. But there's also the top thing, there's two ways to look at it. One, they're not getting preferential treatment other than getting paid to go there. But even then, that's not because we're paying them for a job, which is already been covered. But there's the other one, because they are your advertising, because they are your marketing, because you as a player, the only reason you're going to this event is because of how well they sold that event. I'm going to give them, and I'm being 100% transparent as Felvis, I'm going to give them a little bit more preferential treatment. And here's why. They're going to show you the best that we can offer. Let's look at tourism real quick because again, that's my background. What would you feel if you were coming to South Dakota and the video only showed, you know, maybe Main Street of some of our cities? You probably wouldn't be interested and you'd be like, eh, I can pay it and go somewhere else that has better cool things. Or I can show you this amazing video that shows you Mount Rushmore, Crazy Horse, the beauty of Black Hills, our waterfalls, the Badlands, all the amazing things, Deadwood. I mean, really, those are the things that we want to show you so that you come to our state. So when it comes to my events and my business, I'm going to offer the people that are doing my marketing and advertising, in essence, the best that I can offer them so that they can show you what you can do and how cool this event would be to you. So in a point, if they do get preferential treatment, I understand why. If they don't, they don't. That's my last soapbox. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble on and get aggressive. And I hope you guys have an amazing time wherever you're going. Have great adventures. And I hope to see you guys at some of my events soon. Thank you, Cheyenne, for having me and have a good day. Thank you to Felbus because of you. I, I don't have to stress about affording groceries, which is my reality right now. They've made me able to do what I love for you guys and still take back my life for me. I also just want to add, I am not angry or resentful at any LARP that has just given me a free ticket. I have enjoyed my entire journey. I am so grateful for everything that this community has given me. Um, I have just reached a point financially this year where I can't do it anymore. I, I literally cannot as much as I would like to. 
anyway, yeah, I just wanted to say my piece. I'm gonna get back to work now, and thank you very much as for this video, that is all. I want to add that because of the way Felvis Productions organizes their events and because of the way they treat us, content creators, I'm able to make the art that I love and I don't have to worry about my health failing me because I couldn't afford the things that would make my chronic illness easier to manage. Because I do have a chronic illness. I've talked about it before. It's chronic hyponatremia. Ironically, it means that I have a chronic salt deficiency. <laughs> Why I put the salt in my drink. It's why it's called the Salty Siren Corner. It's, it's why it's why I have a mermaid thing. You get it? Do you get it? And because I can already hear the keyboard bongos, I know what some of the responses to Sharice are going to be. To the people who think that LARP is a beloved hobby and should never be treated as a business, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Every single thing in pop culture that us nerds love happened because somebody took their hobby, stuck it out through all of the crap, and made it into a career. So I want you to think about that and count to ten. Like a long ten. Before you make that comment. Thank you. And besides that, the work that we do has a value completely separate from any business aspect. All of us who make content about LARP work to make people see it as the incredible adventure or the incredible tool that it can be, rather than some cringy pastime. And in doing that work over the past couple years, I've gotten to know some of you, and some of you have felt open enough to share what our work has meant to you. One person told me that they suffer from social anxiety and severe loneliness, and after watching my videos, they went out and tried LARP and made friends, and they said that now they're the happiest they've ever been. It's a lot of pressure. I've even been told by a person who I now consider to be my friend that this channel had a hand in saving their life. It's a lot. For me, that's the real value of the work that we do. And I think that needs to be talked about, because creators like me, and especially Momo O'Brien, have been almost comically undervalued in the past, both by companies and organizations who want us to perform these services for them, and also by casual internet goers who just don't understand the value of what we do. This growing community is so precious to me. The community that sprouted up around my channel alone is so intensely supportive and thoughtful and kind and just all around magical. This particular brand of trust is the result of years of work and vulnerability from everyone involved. You guys have been vulnerable with me and I have been vulnerable with you. And that also needs to be respected by people who want me to put them on this platform in any capacity. So as of right now, we're usually paying out of pocket to perform a service. And we've been doing that because we love and believe in this hobby. It's just that a lot of us are realizing that we don't deserve to go into debt because we happen to love and believe in what we do. <laughs> are we going to demand that every game, even the small local games, pay us hundreds and thousands of dollars to come and play and make videos for them? No. Are we going to demand that people we've worked with in the past retroactively pay up? Also, no. What we are beginning to demand is respect. Respect meaning understanding the value of the service that we perform and treating it accordingly. Sometimes that means that when we tell you what our basic needs are, you don't respond with undervaluing or insults or gaslighting. Sometimes it means not getting pushy or nasty when we have to say no. And sometimes, it means budgeting for and paying for the service you want performed. Right now, we're at a turning point in the LARP world. It's becoming more widely accepted, more common, and more accessible for more types of people. It's more visible now than it's ever been before, and that's partly because of what we do as creators and online communities. I believe that LARP is the entertainment of the future, and it's undergoing right now what Kaza calls a LARP renaissance, which I am taking to mean that if things keep going the way they're going, we could have a holodeck one day. A holodeck. So right now, whether you're helping to create that evolution, participating in the games, or just weighing in from home, 
Every person involved is setting a precedent for not only how LARP creators, but LARP in general, will be treated in the future. Because if this community can't respect its own creators, who will? So I'd like to ask everyone to think about what you want the future of LARP to look like, and how you're going to treat the people who are trying to help shape it. Thank you so much to everyone who supports us and who's going to support us, and thank you everyone else for taking the time to listen. This has been the Salty Siren Corner. And if you feel like supporting LARP content creators, I'm going to have a bunch of their support links in the description of this video. Thank you for always liking us, subscribing to us, and drowning and eating the hearts of our enemies with us. Shy, the entire video, has just been comparing herself to me and Kaza, but I hope you guys appreciate all the work that Az has done for this community. The things that we are scared to say, she says them. She talks about abuse and mental uh, and mental health, and she like what she like oh like, cool, my videos are fun i'm like oh look you can be on a pirate ship and dress like wizards but she's like no she says the things that need to be said she is someone you want spearheading this community she's saying things that matter